Aurora is back on my channel simply because I tripped over her doing this particular cover called Pink Moon. And not many people know about Pink Moon and it resurfaced on YouTube. And I thought, well, I have done all the fellow warriors, because we're all warriors to our queen. I have done a disservice where I have left for nearly six months, no Aurora reactions as such so recently i did two and i don't care i'm doing a third because pink moon is by the fabulous underrated artist that sadly only came to prominence and the three albums that he had wrote after he died and he had committed suicide that artist's name is the person that aurora is covering today called nick drake and she covered it in the album the endless colored ways the song of Nick Drake. The song and album released worldwide in 2023 in streaming and digital and physical formats. So do treat yourself to that. But first, we have to get into what does Pink Moon mean? I would prefer to obviously give you an analysis afterwards and it won't be my own funnily enough. This time around, I'm leaving it to one of the fans of Nick's who gave an extraordinary summarization of, in her own words. And I thought that deserves airplay because that's exactly what it's about. I conjured up three different ways, couldn't decipher which road I was taking, read the research, her answer and said, that would be the perfect accompaniment to a very short, by the way, this is extraordinarily short. It's almost you're listening to the angel herself, our queen, Aurora singing in an angelic form, almost a poem. Think of it that way. And it's in homage to somebody that was called a poet. Let's quickly get through who he was. Nicholas Rodney Drake was an English singer, songwriter, known for his acoustic based songs. And he did not, he did not find a wide audience during his lifetime, but his work gradually achieved a wider notice and recognition. Sadly, after his death. Now, Drake's music remained available throughout the mid 70s, but the 1979 release of the retrospective album Fruit Tree allowed his back catalogue to be reassessed. It went on to be reassessed, the albums were, three albums were released. I can't go through it all, but I do want to mention about his death. There was always this, what happened to him? So, the death during the early hours of November 74, Drake died in his bedroom at Far Lees, according to his death certificate, issued on the 24th of December. He died after taking an overdose of antipressants. He had gone to bed early after spending the afternoon visiting a friend. His mother said that around dawn, he left his room for the kitchen. His family heard him do this many times before and presumed he was eating cereal. He returned to his room a short while later, where it's believed that he took the overdose off amitriline as well as antidepressants. And the precise cause of death is unknown as no post-mortem examination was carried out. And then his musical style is Drake was obsessive about practicing his guitar technique and would stay up through the night writing and experiment, experimenting with alternative tunings. His mother remembered hearing him bumping around at all hours. I think he wrote his nicest melodies in the early morning hours. Self-taught, he achieved his guitar style through the use of alternative tunings to create cluster chords. Now cluster chords, everybody, is a musical chord comprising of three adjacent tones in a scale. And for all new musical buffs and guitar buffs, you'll understand that. Which are difficult to achieve on a guitar, believe it or not, using standard tuning, which is, and that's referred to the typical tuning of a string instrument. Now, similarly, many of his vocal melodies rest on the extension of chords, not just the notes of the triad. He sang in the baritone range, often quietly and with little projection. Finally, I'm just going to say the, the American critic Robert 
Crisco wrote in Crisco's record guide, Rock Albums of the 70s, in 81, Drake's jazzy folk pop is admired by a lot of people who have no use for Kenny Rankin, and I prefer to leave the door of possibility open that he's yet another English mystic romantic, or maybe I'm too set in my ways to hear what he truly is. Baby boomers who missed him the first time around found much to revisit once they rediscovered him and his pensive loneliness speaks directly to contemporary alternative rockers who share his sense of morose alienation. And in a time after COVID, I think after that long introduction, we'll listen to the, the angelic voice of our queen, Aura singing this Bimothris song, Pink Moon, and then we'll just give you the summarization thereafter. Enjoy. I have to interrupt, it is a visualizer, by the way, I forgot to say that. that everybody is it for the song believe it or not but that's the way it is with Nick he wrote short sweet songs like that but it had greater greater meaning and a lot of people said you know which is the most popular song of Nick Drake what are the meanings of Nick Drake's mama voyage over the moon pink moon what is the meaning of the Pink Floyd band name and other things have been asked about Nick. But he was an extremely talented musician and songwriter who one could say peaked outside of his time. Too late for the 60s folk revival and folk rock era and too soon by a long measure for the emergence of the new generation of literate, insightful singer-songwriters of the mid-80s and later, for example, Suzanne Vega, Greg Brown, Dar Williams, or Kate Bush. But isn't it funny how he's having an extraordinary revival and that Pink Moon, the lyrics, is track 19 on the Endless Colorways, the song of Nick himself. It's like 19 songs and they all include three hours place to be poor boy which is being unreleased harvest breed which was unreleased it's just and one's called the road just incredible and i just want to i'm taking my time i just want to build up now to exactly 
something that I had found about Nick that I think has to be shared. People ask what the meaning of the lyrics. And this is what some of the people are saying. Brian Welby Poor said, The origin of this song with the sum of vocals and simple repetitive lyrics is remarkably mundane. A conversation Drake had with the stranger on the day of the lunar lips in August 71, a couple of months before recording began on the album, and that was in October. On the day of the ellipse, the moon took an, an orangey cast and Drake watched it with fascination. A six three tall, Drake stood out when he turned around and looked at the progress of the moon's vanishing act. A passerby in the street stopped to ask him if it looked like a different colour from up there, to which Drake replied, it's pink from here. The response, really? The reply, no, I'm sorry. And though the stranger moved on with a laugh, the conversation stuck with Drake. As he says, I saw it written, I saw it say, Pink Moon is on its way. And none of you stands so tall, Pink Moon, gonna get ye all. Now, I've just, by the way, I just made that up that he was actually six feet tall and there was a lunar eclipse in August of that year. But you don't know. I wasn't around but it does make you think where it does come from because a pink moon is the first full moon in April not August and it's a harbinger of spring and the springtime of one's life is all about youth and innocence and a new growth so to say it is the forward-looking experience of anticipation question is what was Nick anticipating what was he thinking? Nobody will really know why Nick took his own life, why his family were innocently operating and, and going ahead. It's a pink moon, it's a pink moon, he says. I saw it written, I saw it say, pink moon, it's on its way. And none of you stand so tall, pink moon is going to get you all. Some say the pink moon is really a blood moon. And after the suicide, did he just feel eclipsed? So eclipsed he couldn't go out and speak to his family and move forward? I don't know. There are millions of reasons why people take their life in this world. And I just think Nick was a lost soul and felt eclipsed by life, overwhelmed by it from childhood. But in death, he's been found, loved, respected and admired. If I ever see a pink moon, Nick, I'll think of you. I really will. And the angelic aura singing it. If this was fault, I'd say to you, Nick, for the memories the music can leave behind that I, along with new generations, are finding, enjoying and savouring. Thank you.